Thanks for joining me for Laurel Community Spotlight. I'm Communications Director Audrey Barnes. I have a very special guest today for this edition, which I'm calling Council Connections. Laurel City Councilwoman Donna Creary is here. Thanks for being with me. Thanks for having me. It's a good chance for us to sit down and kind of talk about what's happening in the city. Sure. The fiscal year begins July 1st. That's almost like you push the reboot button and start fresh, right? Right. Is that how you see it? Yeah, and it's... Um not only the old, and it, it, especially with the financial uh, woes that the whole nation has been going through during the last 12 months and, and even five years, it's gotten better during the last 12 months, and we just hope, again, that each year we get better the further and further we get away from the recession that occurred. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about a little bit about you before we get into some of the bigger issues mm -hmm. that the city is facing. Ward 2, uh, what would you like us to know about Ward 2? Uh, Town Center, that's the big news. Um, more and more businesses are opening there and uh, each week actually and all of them are ahead of schedule. Um, Burlington has opened, I think Ma Massage Envy opened, Party City has opened. Um, we're able to drive through at least half of it. I believe the new traffic light should be opening within the next 10 days on Cherry. Um, so that'll be wonderful and people can drive through that section. Harris Teeter will be opening in the next couple months. And the long-awaited Regal Cinema will be opening this fall. So that's going to be a big deal. That's huge to Laurel, and the residents of Ward 2 can't wait for it. That town center is, is really long overdue. It is. It is. And I love the sidewalks, which are going to be, I think it's 18 feet wide. So it's really pedestrian-friendly, which is what Laurel's been um, working towards anyway, so the bikeable and uh, walking friendly city, which is great. And it has such a great atmosphere when you go there and see. You can just imagine that, those promenades filled with people. That's going to be a nice place to be. It is. It'll be nice places to eat, and all the stores are new prototypes, so it'll be different experience, even if you've experienced these stores before. And it's almost like the parking is removed from the shopping areas themselves. So you can park your car and then proceed through the walkways and enjoy the cities uh, as a pedestrian, enjoy the shopping area rather. So like you said, that, that's long overdue and we're right. really looking forward to that. But something that happened uh, last night is long overdue as well, the collective bargaining agreement for the Laurel Police Department. Yes. Now that's something that started back when you were council president, right? Yes, it did. Yes. Um, and, and probably many years before the, the thought germinated, but I believe Mayor Mo had promised when we had reached uh, 60 officers that we would seriously um, sit down to the table. And so the negotiating team has been working on it very hard during at least the last year, but um, it definitely came up uh, during my presidency and it was like, okay, let's sit down, we're reaching the 60 officers, let's get this hammered out. What do you think is the most important thing for those Laurel police officers who are covered by this three-year deal? To me, and I, I think the original thought that germinated was that they have a voice. It's not uh, sometimes when an officer would go to their immediate supervising officer, it's one person complaining uh, to their immediate officer, and they might be intimidated by going to their immediate boss. And uh, so they might hold back and not actually be uh, truly honest with what's going on, and that affects morale throughout the police department. But 10 officers going to one representative mm -hmm. takes the personalities out of it and then they feel better about something like that and they're going to be more honest about something that's occurring in the department. So it's true representation and they have a true voice. And over the next three years there's a 13 percent increase for a lot of the officers from sergeant and below. Yeah, That's, that's always good news. That's huge. That's huge. That's wonderful. And we want our police officers to have good morale. So. That's right. That's so right. hopefully this will be a step in that direction. And we want them to stay. Right. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. We have a lot of young guns on the uh, police department, young guys that are coming in with lots, right. of, uh, lots of energy. And you could see that with the torch run that we just had. Right. They ran the 12 miles from uh, all the way from Hyattsville back yes. here to Laurel. 
And luckily it was cooler for them this year too. It was. Usually it's 100 degrees in the shade. Right, I, I love it. Well, yes. since we're talking about hot places, hot things, uh, let's talk about Ocean City. The Maryland Municipal yes. League Convention was in Ocean City yes. um, earlier this week. Now, this was my first time going, and I have to tell you, this was no day at the beach. No. This was hard work, and it was a, a really good learning experience. No. I would say that I, as far as being at the beach, I may actually see it on my way to my car in classes at 7.30 in the morning, and when we come in at 9.30 at night. You can actually look out your window and see the beach. That's about as close as we get to the beach when we're down there for our convention. It's a lot of hard work. It's a lot of uh, classes. It's a lot of uh, discussing the same problems that all the municipalities have, which is 157 of them in Maryland, and uh, what we can do to solve our residents' issues. What um, were some of the things that you picked up from talking with the other municipalities that were, that were there? We all discuss communication. How can we communicate better the services that are available? Uh, how can we solve our residents' problems? Because we have three generations. Every city in Maryland has the same generation. You have the new generation, which is an iPad generation or uh, Blackberry generation. And then you have the middle generation, which would be their parents. And uh, they're somewhat familiar with Facebook and um, emailing. And then you have the older generation, which may not care to do Facebook at all or um, mm -hmm. may feel comfortable with a cell phone, but they prefer hands-on to paper. And um, I understand that. I enjoy reading from paper and printed material. I feel more comfortable with that. Mm -hmm. Well, um, since I'm the communications director, let me in. What, 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 what is the key to communicating with the <laughs> well, residents? Well, actually, <laughs> I guess for the sandwich media, mm -hmm. we have to communicate in 10 different ways. So uh, <laughs> your job is secure. <laughs> you have to communicate through. I could do uh, one a week. <laughs> <laughs> you could do. Um, you got to do ten at once. You've got to do the the cable show, uh, the agendas from the council meetings, and all the meetings that occur here, um, from the posting on the board outside, uh, through sending emails, uh, through the social media, the the uh, tweeting which the mayor actually did a class on yes. for MML, which was wonderful. Um, and the social media, uh, you know, getting out to people, whatever, if it's Instagram and letting people know what's going on out there. Um, There's a lot of community outreach, too, that's part of communicating with Laurel residents. A city hall in the park is big. Yes. Bagels with the council. Yes, once a month. And drop in time with the uh, mayor, drop in time with the council. And we just want people to utilize this um, so that problems don't occur. They're going to arise at some point, but please come out and utilize these before a problem does occur. Perhaps we can uh, head this off at the pass. Mm -hmm. Something important came out at MML that uh, residents need to be aware of when you're talking about revenues and revenues decreasing. Right. Tell us about your concerns and things that you learned at MML that you think uh, residents ought to perk up, especially with the primary election coming up. Well, I, I think there's a, sometimes people turn off with, with all the media perhaps that uh, they feel bombarded um, with different ads and signs and different things, but they really need to get out and exercise their right to vote. There was a gubernatorial uh, debate between four of the candidates for governor down there. And MML is our organization uh, that represents the munis municipalities in Annapolis, in addition to our delegation uh, from here in uh, Laurel, the 21st. And they will go to Annapolis and pass legislation that's important to us. Now, all four candidates from governor addressed highway user revenue. Our funds dropped in 2009 from 800000 down to $95,000 in this city. Just this one wow. city. And every single one of these candidates addressed, we will restore these highway user funds. Now, through MML and our leadership and our president um, and the staff at MML, they went back to the legislature uh, this year and they were able to secure $336,000. However, that's a one time. Mm -hmm. There's no guarantee that money will be there next year. And that's a huge hit to cities our size and smaller cities throughout Maryland. So we need that money coming back. So it's very important to know how your uh, candidate for governor 
and below. Stand on those issues. You've got to get out and vote and get the people back into office that will secure that money here because we're ground zero. Mm -hmm. Main Street is hurting if we don't get those funds back into the city. Mm -hmm. So early voting is already underway, but if you're planning to go to the polls on June 24th, right. you still have time to do a little research and find out where the candidates right. stand Monday, on uh, various things. The voting started yesterday, and it's right here at the Laurel Senior Center. Mm -hmm. So. Well, has the turnout been good? I know you've been uh, showing up down there just to yeah. check things out. I, I, I think it was a few hundred yesterday, which was great. That's great for um, early voting? Yes, yeah. And so each and every day through the 19th, yeah. All right. Well, uh, this is kind of impromptu, so I you know, just want to make sure that I cover what you think is important as we look to, towards the new fiscal year. So with July 1st kind of just around the corner, are there some goals that you set for Ward 2 uh, looking forward? I think just keeping everybody informed. I mean, I think, you know, we'd like to see people come out um, to the bagels with the council and discuss uh, their thoughts. Uh, one of the hot topics down in uh, at the convention center was not only communication, but solar panels. Right. And as they become a bigger and bigger issue, um, that's something that I, they're practically free, I think, at this point. This is what the companies are doing. Um, but as people put them on their houses, they need to be aware of what the first responders and um, how they uh, feel about the uh, panels being put on your house. So you need to talk to your local firefighters and there needs to be like separate shutoff valves and so you need to know your mm. zoning. So you need to talk to the city before you actually put these solar panels on your homes. Mm -hmm. Now we've seen like in your um, area, Ward 2, there's a lot of uh, sewer lines going in, right? Yes, What's WSSC is. doing in your neighborhood? <laughs> They're tearing up my lawn. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and they have been for about two weeks. Um, so they're replacing the sewer lines, which is a good thing. It's an aging system, and we'd rather see them replaced before they break uh, unexpectedly. But um, I feel your pain in that they're going to be going throughout Laurel, and they've uh, been coming down Montrose Avenue, and they started at the top. And uh, it's messy, uh, but they're replacing in the uh, stormwater drains too, and uh, sidewalks, and uh, so throughout the summer. They're going to be tearing up parts of Laurel, and it's just a fact of life, if you will. But um, improvement is always good, right? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. And when they're done, well, they'll be done, and it'll be wonderful. So. Okay. Well, thank you for indulging me today, coming You're in at welcome. the last minute just to kind of sit down and let us get to You're know welcome. you a little bit better. Appreciate it. Thank you for having me. All right. And thank you for watching this edition of Laurel Community Spotlight. Have a great afternoon, everybody. We'll see you next time.